Hello everyone, welcome back. I had such an awesome weekend. Uh, I can't wait to share some of the, I guess, details and clips and just all the stuff that we got up to uh, Friday through to Sunday. It was just fantastic. Um, definitely feeling a little bit nervous <laughs> as I wake up every Monday morning. It's like the Monday gloom and doom. I don't know if you guys feel like that. Mondays for me is just like the, the day of terror because <laughs> you know that like you're starting a new week. I personally feel like there's so much pressure and uh, yeah, it's just really hard to kind of get motivated and get going on a Monday. So I always start my mornings, I guess most mornings to be honest, with some kind of amazing scripture, something that's good energy that just kind of reminds me like, you know, when it gets hard, that's the moment when you keep going. So uh, definitely trying to stay in that mindset uh, today for sure. But uh, let's dive in and talk a little bit about this past weekend. So you might have heard me speaking uh, on social media, I guess, early or mid last week um, that I had a music concert that I was going to. Uh, it was kind of last minute. In fact, um, there is a concert here in Fort Lauderdale called Tortuga. It is a massive three day country music event. Um, granted, growing up in Australia, there's no such thing as country music. I think Keith Urban is like the only country music singer that I can certainly recall that like had a name for himself. And outside of that, like I was clueless to country music. So even when I first moved to the US, um, like you'd hear some of the songs on the radio, but I think um, more notably over like the last one or two years, um, country music has definitely become a bit more mainstream. So that's kind of where I started hearing it. And then um, I guess it started trying to be more intentional about listening to it. And I have really enjoyed it. So I was like, you know what? I need to do something fun for myself. Uh, what can I do that's not going to be like all food related? Uh, because honestly, most of the times when, you know, we're spending time with our friends and our family, you know, there's usually a meal involved and I'm like, oh, I can't keep eating out. Like it's just leaving me so many like question marks. Um, you know, cause you just never know, um, even if it is a, a dish that has very low fat content, um, how much oil did they put in the pan? And if I ask for no oil or no butter, can I trust the chef to serve it to me that way? Because I know as you know, somebody that also enjoys cooking, if I have to make something the way that it's not, I'm just like, uh, just a little bit. <laughs> So I, I really just kind of stress out about um, what's actually going to go into the food that I am consuming, especially this close. I am 18 days out today. It's Tuesday today. So I was like, okay, this could be something fun. Um, I love music. And for those of you that don't know, I actually have a music background. So when I was really young, um, I used to do song and dance or I guess tap jazz, ballet, singing, ba like all of it. Um, absolutely loved it. I can't remember exactly what year I finished, but I did it for a very long time. Um, and then when I got to high school, I was actually in an all girl band. Um, there were five of us. So we were like a rock band. And I guess anyone that is around my age, you probably remember like Lindsay Lohan, um, Hilary Duff, who else? I don't know, Jessica Simpson, like just reel off all of the female artists at the time. Um, especially Lindsay Lohan songs. So we did so many like punk rock girl songs. Um, there was a girl from Australia. Oh my gosh, what was her name? Killing Heidi. I know some of you listening probably don't know who that is, but she's kind of like more on the rockier side um, and was pretty popular. So I used to love, like I was the lead singer, played guitar, but didn't play the guitar on stage. I could play the guitar, um, but I just chose to sing because I liked that better. So I have uh, a lot of, I guess, singing love in my, my veins. Uh, when I went to college, I also sang in a band, except I was the female in an all boy alternate rock band. So um, the type of music that I got into, I guess, around that age was like, we're going to call it like my emo era. <laughs> But I still really have a, like, I have a soft spot for alternate rock music and rock music and just music in general. Um, and did a bunch of stuff like the voice, the Australian idol, like all of that. And it's just something I don't do anymore. And I really, I'm so sad about that. <laughs> like I would, if I could have any other career, believe it or not, I would be a musician. Like that's what I would do. 100% love it. Um, but anyhow, I digress. So back to the whole point. Um, I love music when I get an opportunity to go see a live band or, you know, something like that. I'm all for it. So, um, we ended up kind of planning to go to that event. Now we got, um, a, a one day pass on Saturday. 
Um, I didn't want to go for the whole weekend. Oh my God, I couldn't think of anything worse. <laughs> Three days of showing up like that. Like a few hours is enough that I can do anything. I think four hours is about my cap for any activity. If uh, someone tried to tell me, oh, we're going to be doing this thing and you're going to be doing it for four plus hours. I would just be like, well, that's probably when I'm going to leave. <laughs> I just can't do the same thing for that many hours. Oh my God, I just do my head in. So anyways, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the weekend. So um, I guess Friday evening rolls around. Um, I'm kind of thinking about, you know, what I want to do for my calories, because obviously if I'm going to a music event, I wanted to be able to have a couple of drinks. So at the moment, you know, guys, that my targets were pretty low. 1230 were um, last week's macro targets, 115 carb, 30 fat, very low. Um, so this is really all I had to play with. I, there was no way I was going to compromise my, um, my protein intake. So I basically had, you know, about 500 calories perhaps from um, carbs and fats there combined. So what I decided to do um, was not cycle calories. I know that I had talked a little bit about that um, in my last week's check-in. It's just getting down to the wire. So um, I just think that to give myself some high days intentionally, um, it is going to leave me at like a thousand calories on another day if I just gave myself 200 more. Um, and I think there are a couple of days this week where um, just by way of sheer starvation, I ended up overeating my calories. And you can see that here um, when we have a look at my data. Um, but at least for Saturday, I was like, nope, I am not making any adjustments. I just need to stick to this um, so that I can be really accurate. So um, Friday, I guess we went to dinner. Um, we, I'll put up some video of the food choices that I made when I went out for dinner. So again, thinking about the caloric density of most things on a menu in a restaurant, um, I had to be really mindful. So normally I would always order like a starter, probably a couple of starters and try some different things. And then I would have a main and then usually like one or two drinks, depending on you know how I'm feeling. Um, but this time around, I did not order any starters. Um, and then I had, uh, I guess a small main dish and a small appetizer that I was like eating as my main. Um, and they were both tuna or ahi tuna. So the reason that I chose tuna over what I might normally choose as a steak, um, is just because it is so much lower in fat. Um, and thus it is just overall lower in calories. So you can see the ahi tuna just actually has quite a lot of avocado like in the middle of it. Um, and then it's served with these like fried plantains, which by the way, are so delicious. Definitely tried it, but did not uh, eat all of that. Uh, and I kind of picked around the avocado and I think I might've had like 20 grams of avocado from what, that, what you can see there in that dish. So uh, one of the things that I also get in the habit of when I am um, starting to get pretty serious with my macros is just ask about, you know, the menu and ask what are the portion sizes and, um, you know, do you or can you do this with this ingredient or this, uh, this with this, in, this recipe? Um, so I actually just asked what the serving size of the tuna was in the appetizer dish and they said that it was three ounces. So that was good to know. So I was like, okay, well, they're probably not going to overserve because that's, you know, wasteful in terms of monetary value. Um, so I was like, okay, must be three, three ounces. They're not going to, um, give me more than uh, they meant to. Otherwise, you know, they're giving away, um, produce. So I tracked that as three ounces of ahi tuna and then a small serving of, um, um, avocado and the tuna is coated in like a sesame oil um, and then like a sweet soy kind of glaze. So I put in like, I don't know, I think 10 mils of combined sesame oil and the sweet soy glaze um, just so that I wasn't forgetting about the fat and the carbohydrate that came on it. Um, and then for my main, I also ordered, uh, I was, I guess a a crusted tuna. Um, it was a very light crusty. You can see in the picture, it's also served with like this delicious mashed potato. So I totally caved. I had about half of that. Um, it was so delicious. I haven't had mashed potato in like, oh my God, a long time. I personally never order it. It was something that we ate probably so much as kids that I like feel sick eating it now, <laughs> but this was like cheesy and buttery. So I had, I tracked about 50 grams of potato um, or like mashed potato. So obviously it's got the fats in it. It's ready. 
Um, and then the tuna, I asked what the portion size of that was. And he said that it was six ounces. So that's kind of how I tracked my two um, main dishes. And the reason that I had two is because I basically just had protein left for the entire day. So I had a large protein serving at dinner, but you know, the grand scheme of things, that's not the end of the world. Um, my goal is to try and hit my protein on a, a daily basis. If I can spread it out evenly over four or five meals, then amazing. Um, but, you know, for the entire week, I'd already been pretty consistent in hitting that number. So by Friday, I was like, okay, if I just hit this total, that's better than not at all. So I kind of banked my calories so that I could have, you know, a couple of meals um, or a couple of dishes uh, when we got to the restaurant. So I had that, also had it with an old fashioned. The reason that I opted for an old fashioned over maybe like a cocktail is just that it is basically straight up um, spirits. Um, and normally it is served with simple syrup and then um, some kind of bitters. Bitters is very low calorie. It's just straight up alcohol. Um, and that kind of added a little bit of flavor. Um, and then I asked for it without the simple syrup. And then I had them bring over like the little coffee sachets um, to put in a little bit of like sweetener or stevia. So that was actually pretty good. That um, brought the calories down to probably like 120 um, because they would be doing a double serve of um, uh, the, the whiskey. So um, one ounce of most spirits uh, is going to set you back about 65, 63 calories. Um, and then I assume that they are double pouring. It's very unlikely that they're like, oh, yes, we'll give you one ounce <laughs> for your $15. So, um, yeah, I just attract that as two ounces of, um, of whiskey. So about 120 calories. So that's how that day went. Um, Saturday morning was awesome. Um, we got to relax and hang out on the patio. I was actually planning on filming um, one of my training sessions over at a, a physical therapy clinic called SoFlow PT. Um, I've actually uh, had a consultation previously uh, with the gentleman that owns the club, um, Dr. Carson, and um, uh, I guess we will probably end up doing a little bit of work back and forth with some of our clients but um, I had the opportunity to go and have a look at the facility a few weeks ago. Um, and yeah, I went back and actually did a workout there. Um, so we filmed, that was so much fun. Um, it was really cool just to try different equipment. And then I'm gonna put up all of the videos. They have this badass like outdoor turf area on the rooftop. So um, we uh, went up and had a little go of, I guess the equipment upstairs. So I ended up doing my box squats up there. Um, we also did a overhead kneeling press on the Smith machine, uh, not, not the Smith machine. We did the scrape the rack overhead press. Um, so that was really fun to do an outdoor workout. I haven't done that in such a long time. So hopefully I can kind of keep that up just as like a little bit of novelty for my training so that um, I stay motivated and excited about it. So that was really cool. Um, and then afterwards, I knew I still needed to get my steps in before getting to the concert. I just didn't want to have any anything down to chance just in case we didn't move a whole lot at the concert. Um, so we went and did a beautiful walk along um, the beach in the morning. And then the concert, we didn't need to be there until the artist that we wanted to see until 4 p.m. Um, and then it was finishing at 10. So about six hours uh, of being at the music event. So what I did for Saturday uh, was allow myself 500 calories to some drinks. Um, so we're talking like 40% of my daily calorie intake. Now, I did mention earlier that I didn't want to touch my 125 grams um, of protein. I wanted to make sure that I got that in. So basically, I had about 125 grams of carbohydrate that I was willing to, I guess, track as alcohol. Um, I guess the reason that I choose um, to track alcohol as a carbohydrate is that it has a slightly higher thermogenic effect um, of food than fat. So more similar, I guess, to, to alcohol um, than, and again, I wasn't going to use protein, although the um, thermogenic effect of protein and alcohol are much closer to one another. Um, that's not the macronutrient that I was going to be trading out. Um, so I, I used or tracked that as, alcohol, uh, as carbohydrate. So basically what that panned out as being um, that day I had about 125 grams of protein, 
Um, and then I had given myself 125 grams of carbs. And you might be wondering, well, how does that work out um, when your carb limit was only 115? Well, I traded out some fats. So on that day, my goal was to have only 12 grams of fats. And I promise you all of that math works out. Um, it basically meant that I had a meal in the morning. Uh, which was uh, protein. And I had about 28 grams of carbs and 12 grams of fat in that first meal. And then it was protein only until we got to the event and it gave me, and I worked it out. (laughs) This is how much like thought went into this. Um, It meant that I could have eight ounces of alcohol. So just clear spirits. So what was so good about this venue was that they had, we got VIP tickets and they had, I guess, some slightly different mixed drinks than what you might normally have. They had all kinds of different um, Monster Zero beverages. So I was having like this strawberry margarita, I think was the flavor. I think it was Monster. Actually, I can't recall. But anyway, it was a diet energy drink. So zero calorie um, and they had a couple of different flavors. So I was just having um, vodka and this like strawberry flavored um, zero calorie soda, which was perfect. Um, So that meant I basically had three drinks over six hours um, uh, and they were all double shots. So I got my eight in, uh, sorry, six in while I was there. And then while we were getting ready, I poured myself a drink here, which Gave me a bit more confidence that the actual amount of vodka was um, exact. So yeah, it was definitely not a day without a lot of planning um, to make sure that I could kind of hit those targets, but that's the logic that went into it. um, And uh, it worked out really well. So on that particular day, I want to show you my steps. So I ended up doing, here we go, this number down the bottom here, 24,000 steps on that day, which is like five times what I normally do um, if I'm just having like a day here stuck in front of my computer. So um, that actually kind of carried some weight this week, um, thankfully, because on other days, and you can see my Sunday, maybe I'll go over to the master sheet. You can see that on Sunday here, my calories were 1523. I was so hungry and there's a very clear reason as to why that was the case. So you can see I actually nailed my day um, on, uh, I guess, Saturday when I was at the concert at 12.54. Um, but in terms of calories, I ended up, um, under eating protein and overdoing, um, I guess carbohydrates. When we got home, I was still really hungry. So we ordered some food. Um, I can't remember what we had, but anyway, oh no, I had a, I had a pre-made meal that I'd already, um, prepared at home. It was like a beef stir fry, um, and it had some carbs in it. So I didn't quite hit my macros, but I was like determined to hit my calories. So, um, that was all well and good, but my gosh, having four grams of fiber on Saturday just set me up for one heck of a Sunday. And then also doing all of that exercise and reminder, I also did a training session in the morning and, an, and, an, and a 90 minute walk. Um, I was so hungry. So I just found it almost impossible to hit my targets on, on Sunday. So um, I figured, look, I... If I'm going to eat something, um, I'm going to make sure that it is mostly protein. So you can see I've got lots of um, protein containing foods here. Um, And I also just mostly had things that I had prepared. So um, on Sunday, we went in and got a workout done in the morning. Um, And then I wanted to actually show Sam this like little, I guess it was like a croissant French bakery type place. (laughs) warning flags. Holly, what are you doing? Duh. Why would you go to a bakery? But it wasn't actually that bad. Um, it was so cool though. I wanted to go and check it out. So that for future reference, I can go and have a coffee after training and get like a, I don't know, a little dessert, but there were so many amazing, like tiny, teeny, witty little bite-sized desserts, which I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) So we ended up getting, um, two, we we ordered four macaroons with different flavors. And then Sam got this like pistachio cream filled, I don't know, thing. It was awesome, but I just had like a little bite of each. So calorie wise, it was probably like a hundred tracked it. It was fine. That really wasn't the the issue. (laughs) That was not the problem at all. Um, or maybe it was maybe trying that nice sweet flavor, 
kind of just leaves you like wanting more for the rest of the day. So, you know, I don't know whether it was true or not, but I just, again, I think it was probably more just to do with low fiber, high, a high activity level on Saturday that just um, set me off for later in the day. So Anyhow, we went to the bakery, checked that out. And then I was like, okay, well, I want to stay active today. Um, so what can I do? So we ended up hopping on our bikes and riding to a restaurant um, or like a brunch place that we go. Now, um, it was just a beautiful day and I did not want to stay inside. I wanted to get out and do something, but I also didn't want to ruin my macros. So everything is still going perfect at this point. So um, I actually packed one of my own salads. So it's actually the chicken salad with a honey mayo dressing, which I'm pretty sure is in the document that I've given you guys um, for all of my meal prep recipes. Um, It's delicious. It's got like little broccoli florets. Um, It has like a coleslaw mix, corn kernels, tomato, peppers, like it's super colorful. Um, And then I do egg, boiled egg and chicken. So like it's a decent salad and I don't like salad. This is a decent salad. Um, so I actually put that in, um, my handbag and it's only like a 10 minute bike ride. So we got to the restaurant. Um, I guess I brought out some bread at this point. I'd only had, I don't know, 10 grams of carbs for the day. So I had a small little, like a singular cube, um, of bread tracked that no problems. Um, and then I ordered a salad from their menu cause I didn't want to not order food and just be that person. <laughs> Sorry. Or at least, um, you know, take up a seat, but then not, you know, spend anything. I feel guilty doing that. So you can see, I ordered their Caesar, but I said like I stripped it of blue cheese. I asked for everything on the side. I wasn't planning on eating it. Um, and then that was just, so I could dump my salad right on top. So you can see like the before and the after here. Mine was like, I, I said to Sam, it was so funny. I'm like, damn, my, my recipe actually looks like it belongs on this plate in this restaurant. So go me. <laughs> so um, it was actually really great. I was so full after eating that meal. Um, it was just so satiating. So I ordered a Diet Coke, no alcohol, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, we just really enjoyed a nice, um, I guess, relaxing brunch after a pretty tough training session. Um, so for the rest of the afternoon, I actually had to get a little bit of work done and then I had a posing session at like five 30. So that was a full hour. Um, and I think that just kicked my butt, um, staying on my feet for that time in heels practicing. I mean, it's obviously necessary. Um, but I was like getting really hungry at this point. So it was towards the end of the day where I was just like, I can't contain myself anymore. So I didn't eat anything out of the house um, or like ordered, but I I did have like a protein bar. Um, I had one of my like Ninja Creamy ice creams, which again, these are all really high protein, low calorie foods. Um, So, you know, on a good day, they're great options. It's just, I was so hungry. I just had like a couple of extra snacks and things that um, ended up putting me over by 15 grams of carbs. But you can see here, my fats was a little bit high. And I think, unfortunately, the food that got me over in fats was probably uh, in one of the protein bars. Um, I know that they have like nine or 10 grams of protein, and I'm pretty sure I had two of those. So, I mean, straight off the bat, you know, there goes 20 grams of fat. And my daily goal was probably only 25 or 30. (laughs) So adding in like boiled egg and then, you know, a little bit of fats from everything else that I had had throughout the day, um, kind of just started to add up 1500 calories still doesn't even go very far. So, um, yeah, I think I I had some jello as well, which got my protein uh, a little bit higher, but it was just, it was tough to hit. So that was my weekend of how I kind of navigated things. But I mean, you can see here, my weekly average calories came in at 1374. Um, So yeah, I was 12% over. It's just, it was tough to hit those numbers. Um, And you can see earlier in the week on Wednesday, I can't remember what happened on Wednesday, but I know that's a big coaching day. Um, I know I did a spin that was late in the evening. I did a walk. I mean, it doesn't stand out as being anything crazy. I think I was just really, really hungry. Um, Oh, I know what this is. Okay. So it's carbs and fats that are high. Biscoff, any Biscoff lovers out there? Oh my God. I love Biscoff so much. Um, I literally have like, (laughs) I bought many, many months ago, like bulk pack 
And it comes in like a pack of eight because I was like, I don't want to have to buy this again or like keep reordering. I just wanted it in my cupboard because I was doing a lot of cooking and recipes at the time. So um, I am pretty sure Wednesday was the day where I just caved to some Biscoff. I just had a spoon in situation, a few big spoonfuls. I'm like, God dang it. <laughs> this is so annoying. So tasty. Uh, I didn't beat myself up about it, obviously. But, you know, if you have 50 grams of Biscoff, that's going to set you back a few hundred calories. So it was just that on top of my normal meal prepped meals. Um, and that ended up taking me over by quite a substantial amount. So one of the things that I think I've done, given I'm so close, um, I have, um, put the Biscoff just kind of out of sight. Um, not throwing them out, obviously not going to do that. I love Biscoff. I want it there when I get back from all of my competitions. Um, but I, I just cannot be doing that. I can't just move it to the next day anymore and expect to be able to catch back up. Um, just because the targets are so low. So that's kind of the one adjustment I think that I've made this new week. Um, no more Biscoff in eyesight, no more, well, I can fit it in because I can't fit it in anymore. I, in order to hit that 12.30 this week, um, I have to stick to my four meals. It's basically the ones that I have prepped. I think I've got a picture here that I can show you guys. Let me see if I've got it. So this is the image um, of all of the prepped meals. So I have a beef pesto stir fry at the back over here. Um, I believe that's like 30 grams of protein, nine grams of fat, and then uh, I think it's only like 15 grams of carbs. Um, here's my chicken salad with the egg again that I'll do with a must honey mustard, um, which is homemade so that it's not FODMAPy. Um, this is my beef bolognese with the zoodles. Um, and then over here, um, I have ordered a, a rice to go with this dish. This is just a butter chicken jarred product um, that is very macro friendly. It's only 60 calories per serve. So that's just got like zucchini, yellow squash and chicken um, and the sauce is pretty much it. And then I'll obviously add the um, parmini rice, which uh, that arrives, I think, today. So I basically have to eat these four meals or if I don't, I am going to be starving. So um, there may be like a couple of instances where I trade out one of these and then I just opt for like a Greek, Greek yogurt with a powdered mix in if I need something sweet. Um, but, you know, right now with these calories, I just can't be fitting in a serving or making one of my meals or like my snack as Biscoff because I'm going to be starving and still want to eat all of my other food. So I guess we can take a look at my data. So the good news is I am still down on average um, by 0.8 from the previous week. So last week's weekly average weigh-in was 134.4. This week I've come in at 133.6. Um, I took my weight this morning and I'm into the 132s. Thank the heavens. Amazing. Uh, and I'm still convinced that if it wasn't for the 24,000 steps that I did this week because I was over my calories, probably wouldn't have uh, lost as much weight as I did. So um, that is a good thing. Um, so very happy that I have still trended down, um, but you know, I've got three pounds to go. I've been saying this number or oh, three to four pounds for a little while now. Um, it's just, as you get leaner, there's less and less body fat to get rid of. And it is that much harder. Like it's a disproportionately more challenging um, uh, week. Every time we like get down to the wire, there's just less body fat. Um, and it's a much harder job. And, uh, I guess you do start to see the changes pretty quick, um, because now you're starting to reveal the muscle underneath. So I am definitely looking way leaner, um, you know, when I do my comparison pictures, but it's moving slowly. <laughs> so yeah, I need to get a wriggle on in the next 18 days and provided my bikini comes, otherwise that competition isn't going to be the one I do. So um, overall, my compliance was high. My dietary fiber was not too bad, um, at least compared to the previous week. This one really low day where I had some alcohol obviously didn't help, but um, the rest of the week was really high. So 30, 35, um, those numbers kind of kept me up in the 20s, which is good. Um, I'd like to see much higher uh, dietary fiber. And I think this week that it will be um, just because of the choices of foods that I've got. 
I wouldn't be surprised if it's averaging 30 this week. So again, I might not see a whole lot of movement on the scale because I'm bringing my fiber back up. So again, this is where you've got to be able to look at yourself uh, very objectively, not emotionally, and decide, okay, yes, you know, I hit my macros, even though my weight on the scale didn't move, you know, I was very intentional about bringing my fiber up this week so that I wasn't starving. So um, I'll be kind of conscious of that, I think, this week as I go through um, with all of those prepped meals. Um, hit my protein compliance, which I'm very happy with. Obviously there was one day Saturday that was a little bit low, but every other day, um, was very good. So I'm very proud of myself for that. Um, overall, my sleep was a little bit lower this week in total. Um, 46, um, hours was my previous 43 this week. Um, uh, muscle soreness kind of trending down. Um, I was a little bit sore on Sunday, um, but nothing crazy. Um, Hunger, Whew, that has taken a dive. So if we go over to my tracking sheet, you can see here my hunger levels were five out of 10. So where one is experiencing unsatiable hunger, 10, very full and satisfied after every meal. So this is the lowest it has been. Sunday, honestly, was the worst. And I ended up putting a five on Saturday as well. And I think just from the perspective of after having a little taste of some of those baked goods, even though it was just a bite and it fit my macros, it just made you want to have more. I was thinking about food. I was wanting to cook and all the things obviously couldn't. Um, so I definitely put my um, hunger scores much higher on the weekend. And then you can see my food focus. This is the highest it's also been. So on, on Sunday, after that big day of activity, lots of um, moving around and dancing, uh, and also just having very low fiber foods, food focus was insane. So, you know, I'm surprised that, well, actually I'm very happy that I only came in at 15, 23, because that is, um, this was very hard. <laughs> so coming over to have a look at my training for this past week, um, second week of my new program, the Miss Bikini um, Olympia part three, so that volume came in at 131,000, which is comparable to previous programs. So on my highest weeks, um, I've hit 130s before. I've been up in the 115s. So it's a good volume week. Um, but you can see that my energy expenditure is just kind of generally down from my previous program. Last week, I talked a little bit about why that is, and that's because I was intentional with reducing the overall training volume. There are not as many working sets in this program. I have taken it back down. And part of that is just to make sure that I don't injure myself. I want to get through this prep, not um, end up, you know, with an injury. So energy expenditure is down a little bit. Um, but overall, you can see my um, total energy expenditure is very high. So 4,700. Um, that might even be my highest all time. I've done a 4,200 once before. I'm just looking back at my past data. Yeah. So this week was the busiest, most active week that I have had. And I will put that down to all the walking and then the extra bike ride that I did um, uh, to lunch on, on Sunday. So probably a good thing that I was more active based on my poor compliance to my macros. Um, again, for multiple reasons throughout the week. So with that being said, what, are the, what is the plan for this week? Um, I'm going to be doing the same grueling 1,230 calories. Uh, I'm already off to a really good start um, yesterday and this morning. Haven't uh, found my way into the Biscoff jar just yet and hopefully will not. <laughs> um, I just can't fit it. Um, and then my training is going to be moving to five sessions per week. Obviously, that's the new program split. They're slightly shorter, just a little bit more manageable. Um, and I think I need to still continue to shoot for 2,000 calories of energy expenditure in those sessions. Um, now that the progressive, the, the training intensity is increasing in week three uh, of this new program, I've got to go and train this morning, actually. Um, I'm hopeful that uh, that will mean that my energy expenditure goes up. The other thing that I am doing this week is increasing my overall hit cardio. So I've been doing 60 minutes total for the week. So two 30 minute bike rides, that's it. Um, now I'm going to be doing three. So I'm trying to up my energy expenditure to around 900 calories to continue creating a little bit more of a deficit. So just to show you the math here, um, that's going to contribute per day 
about 130 calories of energy expenditure, or it's going to create, let me start that again. That's going to help create a 128 calorie deficit each day. So, you know, what I'm working out all of the math for me to achieve a certain amount of weight loss each week, this can kind of, you know, contribute to that um, in a meaningful way. Steps, I think I'm going to keep it at 10 to 11,000 steps this week. So again, upping my overall movement. So I'll have to be a bit more intentional um, with doing maybe like a 70 minute walk um, during the weekdays now. So normally I do 60. Um, I think just doing an extra 10 minutes is probably going to help. Um, And if I can't do it during the weekdays, then I'm going to have to do a little bit more walking on the weekends, um, perhaps like I did last weekend. Um, And then my overall goal for energy expenditure is going to be up to 4,300 now that I've added in that extra session. So my week looks like crap. (laughs) Lots of, uh, lots of movement, uh, very difficult calorie targets. Um, But I mean, this is kind of what I would expect this many weeks out. Um, Yeah, I'm literally two in a few days, two weeks in a few days um, from being on stage. So I was also just looking at when um, some other potential competitions are. And again, I just worry that I'm not going to have my suit in time um, or just giving myself backup plans just in case I don't think I'm ready. And I honestly do not want to hop on the stage if I don't think I am 100% ready to go. Um, So, you know, I'm still planning. I'm still pushing as hard as I can um, for the next several weeks or sorry, two weeks. Um, I'll probably register my event um, the week before um, and that will just be based on how I'm looking. So there is the Pittsburgh Pro Show, but there's also the NPC at that same uh, event that I was looking at. Um, So then if we go over to um, NPC schedule, um, we can choose the date. So I'm thinking like maybe the first week of May. I actually have a wedding to go to uh, around May. I think it's May 5 or 6. So maybe May 7 would be a good one. What have we got here? Mm-mm. Okay, this is the one that came up before. So that would be a good one to do. Um, and then I think nationals are not too far away from that. So Yeah, I'll have to take another closer look, but I think at this point that would probably be the next show. Um, I'm still trying to find out whether I can do the um, show here in Boca Raton, which is, so this is the event that I would like to do. Um, I have to find out, however, if by me having um, a medical certificate to have um, a testosterone replacement, because my testosterone levels were like hypogonadal. <laughs> I was get, I think I was at like five micromoles per deciliter. So now I kind of put myself back up into the, the range that everybody else is at, uh, which is somewhere in the seventies, I'm assuming. Um, then I, I still don't know whether I can do this event or not. They might consider that if you've got anything that is not um, naturally being produced by your body, um, they might say that that's not allowed. So to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're still within the normal reference ranges for women. Um, it would be if it would be completely unfair to enter into a natural show um, if your levels were in that like supra physiological range. Um, but again, it's not not my sport, so um, or my my organisation. They might just have tight regulations. Um, so I'm still waiting to hear back. I have submitted an inquiry to ask about it. Um, but this would be a really good one to me. Like I still consider myself a natural athlete. Um, you know, I've never taken any of the performance enhancing drugs. I've never done any of the anabolic boosters. Um, I, you know, would consider myself natural. <laughs> so yeah, this would be a cool show, but I don't know whether I'll be allowed to. So we'll have to see. So that's all guys. Um, I hope that this was uh, interesting. Um, I guess for many of you that might be also doing, um, you know, a a competition or a fat loss phase yourself, you can kind of see the strategy that goes into, um, you know, incorporating a little bit more flexibility, even me going out for brunch on Sunday. You know, that was so much fun. I had such a nice time. It was a beautiful day. Um, You know, I just packed my own salad and plopped it on top and had a little cube of bread like that was like perfect. Um, It's exactly what I needed. So the next part, I guess, is going going to uh, check out all of the YouTube questions. So let's do that. Okay, so over to the questions from last week's video. So the first one is um, in regards to my eating disorder recovery. So uh, how long was the recovery period? Did you do an all-in and cut out exercise completely? 
What tips would you give to somebody who wants to do the same? I've suffered from uh, an eating disorder for 18 years and all the small changes don't work anymore. Your recovery and ability to have a life outside of the ED has given me hope and motivation that recovery for me is possible too. And oh my gosh, yes, it totally is. Um, I just feel like I have this new newfound sense of freedom. It's so beautiful. Um, but I do think that that is going to be a separate video. If I was to go into all of the details um, and, you know, make it meaningful for you, um, that would be like an hour long video. So I'm going to make a note and put it into my social media schedule up here. Um, and I will do a video that talks a little bit more specifically about that. So thank you so much for the question, but it's a long one, a long response. And I want to make sure that I can get through some of these other shorter ones too. Um, hey Holly, uh, looking fantastic. Hope you keep Bart on stage. I'm curious about managing your pain. You mentioned going to physio and I wonder if you take NSAIDs. I hurt everywhere and take them when I cannot stand the pain anymore. And I would love to hear your take on that. So, uh, interestingly, no, I've never, never used anti-inflammatories. Um, I, I've never had that much pain that I would want to take something like that. I, I've always been one of these people that even if I had a headache, I'd be like, I don't need medication. I'm fine. <laughs> so um, I've never taken NSAIDs. Um, I guess there is a little bit of uh, information um, that I can share about NSAIDs on, um, I guess, muscle growth. Uh, unfortunately, they do interfere with uh, hypertrophy outcomes, but I think uh, I'd have to go and have a look at the exact um, like uh, frequency dosage to, to tell you exactly how frequently you need to be having it to actually interfere um, but from my understanding, oh my God, my cat, I, did you catch that? I don't see what happened. That is too funny. Anyway, um, if you do take NSAIDs, um, you know, in that kind of post training setting, I believe that it can blunt signaling, um, for muscle growth. So, um, you know, if you are constantly in pain though, I would be looking to the underlying causes. So why is it that you are in pain? Um, because if you can't stand and that's happening on a regular basis, um, I, I think that, you know, NSAIDs aren't the answer. That's a short term, very temporary solution. Um, I would like to hear that you're completely pain free because, you know, you found out what the um, problem actually is and that you've gotten some, um, you know, feedback from a, a professional to find out what is causing that. Um, there might be a clear reason for you that just he didn't communicate here. Um, but if it's from training, um, I would say that it probably indicates that you're um, doing too much. You shouldn't be chronically sore. I think some soreness is a sign that, oh, you've done a session that's caused some positive adaptation. Your body's trying to adapt to that stimulus. And that's why we kind of get sore. Um, but if it's all the time, then I, I would probably say that you are doing a little bit too much and you're training in an unrecovered state. And when we do that, we're not actually going to get the same kind of signaling for muscle growth. So you might be able to get through your workouts. Um, I know I've certainly done my fair share of workouts in quite a bit of discomfort, um, but it shouldn't be all the time. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of my, my, my hot take. Um, and no, I don't personally use NSAIDs. Um, okay. This series is the best. Holly. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you. Uh, when you say we in relation to your business, how big is your team? Um, do you outsource contractors or internal staff? I'm interested in the business side of things too, as you rebuild. Um, yeah. Okay. So we, we do have a team. Uh, it's certainly not huge. Um, we have a director of operations. Um, so that is Miss Terry Market. Um, she kind of runs the, um, the business. So I spend a lot of time with you. You guys have seen what I do with my schedule. I'm still doing uh, a little bit of coaching, but most of the time I am either in meetings, uh, I am writing content, I am filming, I'm on social media. Um, I am doing all kinds of different things. So I, my job is like, you know, wear many, many hats, um, reviewing videos and providing feedback for how, like I want content to look, et cetera. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff that I do, but she kind of manages the, um, like the organization and the structure of the business. So, um, that's one, one person in the company. 
Um, we also have uh, somebody that does um, part-time, I'm going to say marketing, not full-time. Um, and they run all of our uh, email campaigns. Sorry, if you were subscribed to my newsletter, um, we send out three or four pieces of content each week. Um, that's all free, educational, um, and just to help you, you know, uh, improve and get to where you want to go with your, your health and fitness goals. Um, so she, she manages the email marketing that we run. And then she also spends a lot of time on our website. So, um, updating like any of our challenges, making sure that all of our landing pages are staying, you know, up to date and, uh, refreshed and beautiful. Um, and, uh, spends a lot of time just making sure that our, our website is doing exactly what it's meant to do. So uh, I guess that's kind of like a marketing, um, web person. We also have a, a full-time executive assistant. So she basically mans my inbox. So I'm looking at my inbox right now and there's 136 unread emails and that is just accrued over like the last couple of days. <laughs> so um, I have uh, Delaney um, who looks after, I guess, my inbox, kind of catches up on things that are uh, urgent and uh, essential. Um, and then she's also doing lots of other tasks for the business, um, particularly with regards to like our products and services and making sure that we are, you know, keeping up to date with all of the like official, I guess, administrative type tasks. So, you know, we're in the process of getting all of our businesses trademarked and copywritten, all of our books. Um, you know, she's organizing all those types of things. She organizes all of my filming schedules. So she liaises with our full-time videographer um, and just puts things on my calendar to make sure that I don't forget. She also manages my um, email inquiries for coaching uh, and gets people onboarded, you know, signing all of our contracts, you know, that type of thing. So that's a full-time position as well. Um, and then, like I mentioned, we have a full-time videographer um, and that's to do or produce like three to four pieces of content per week for both Instagram and YouTube. Um, and then we have, uh, I guess, our coaches and then we have our tech team. So our tech team, um, uh, I guess, have been working on our training app. So that consists of like three different individuals. <laughs> um, and that is, uh, I think we've got two full-time people that worked on the app to get it built. Um, and then we have, I guess the lead dev. Um, and then there are some other supporting people that kind of step in and help with like data transfer and stuff. So every time I do a new program, someone will kind of review it, pop it in. And then as we're building our new platform, um, that will, that person will kind of disappear because I'll be able to go in and create programs from a platform. <laughs> so that's that. And then we also have a couple of part-time, um, graphics people. So, uh, for any of our, you know, big campaigns, um, I'm sure I don't have something that I can pull up right now, but spring into summer is a really great example. Um, you know, we have somebody that kind of does all the design for, for that. We also have a UX UI person, um, that works kind of very part-time. Um, you know, once we kind of move forwards with a feature in the app, um, you know, we've, we've kind of got a, a, an outline or a skeleton and then she comes in and makes it look beautiful. She's also the person that designed our website, um, or at least the visual component. And then we have the tech team who do the, the back end. Um, and then we have some part-time writers as well. So I have somebody that steps in, um, if I am just too busy to do content, um, I will have somebody come in and do like some supportive type work and then I'll review it all, make it different, add in some extra references, uh, put the Holly touch on it. Um, and you know, away we go. So yeah, that's kind of our team. There are a lot of us. Um, <laughs> and yeah, what's really funny is that, you know, regardless, I think of how big your, um, your team is those, some of those positions are almost like mandatory. So you have to be at a certain like income capacity to be able to float that. Um, so, you know, even in my previous company, we still had all the same positions, but it was just a bigger team. So yeah, it's tough. I mean, you've kind of got to invest in yourself to be able to be consistent in, you know, the social platforms. Um, and it, it's, it comes at a hard, high cost. I mean, I hate to think what our, I'm sure if I go and take a look at our expenses, I mean, we've got like four full-time, um, employees. I mean, do that math. <laughs> it, it is a lot. And, you know, that's just to make sure that you've got smooth, seamless, um, email campaigns. You know, if I was to do all of this, like it wouldn't, wouldn't happen. I already do a hundred hours on my own. So, um, yeah, it, it's a lot of work to kind of produce, um, you know, what we are doing. Um, so thank you so much for that question. Um, I love a good business question. 
Um, okay, so I have to say your in videos are interesting, informative and very helpful. Thank you so much for that you do. Looking forward to hearing all about Tartuga. Well, <laughs> you heard all about my uh, how do I fit some cocktails in uh, antics. Um, I have a question regarding your shoes. What kind of shoes do you recommend for weight training? I've been using running shoes and have a softer sole, which helped reduce the impact on my feet. They're great for walking and like cardio. However, they have me a little off balance when I'm doing weight training, even body weight. What are some good shoes with a softer sole? So uh, I think all of us started out with uh, those types of shoes. Um, I think uh, as you become more advanced and you're you know, good with all of the, the foundational movements, I've actually found myself um, enjoying just putting a sneaker back on because it does, it creates some instability. So I've noticed when I do my squats now on the Smith machine or lunges, I will still occasionally be wearing my kind of tennis shoe um, but I can't lift as much load because I am trying to stabilize. Now, you know, I guess that would be problematic if I was truly just focusing on strength. So, you know, if you do a strength specific sport, you want to be able to lift the maximum weight for a single rep. Um, it makes sense that you would wear a hard flat sole. Um, I obviously like to use uh, my Converse, but the toe box is a little bit narrow. Um, there are actual proper powerlifting shoes and strength based shoes. I used to have a pair of Adidas. Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name now, but I'm terrible like that. But they were an Adidas powerlifting shoe um, and they had a really flat sole and a wide toe box so that you could get really good splay with your toes for the maximum amount of like um, stability and force, you know, to push into the ground. So a hard flat sole is great if you care about your strength because you want to lift as much weight. Um, I guess for the purposes of hypertrophy, we're just trying to make sure that we train the muscle until we can get it pretty close or to failure. Now you can do that in a tennis shoe, but it does like you've experienced create a little bit of uh, instability. So if you're brand new to lifting, that wouldn't be my recommended um, choice of shoe. I'd actually want them to start in something that gives them a little bit more stability. Uh, and then as they get more practiced and refine, you know, the skill of lifting weights, you know, of doing a squat, of doing a deadlift and doing a lunge, um, you know, then if they wanted to, you know, they could introduce an inherent element an inherent element of difficulty by adding that really big spongy sole. So I still not, I still kind of gravitate back and forth between um, my hard converse um, and I wear like a, a high top. So um, uh, yeah, just it's the, the side of the sneaker, the back of the sneaker comes a little bit up my ankle. Um, but I also still wear my just regular sneakers. Um, I guess they're kind of color coordinated. <laughs> I guess if you're a girl, I mean, I liked my shoes to match my outfit. So if I've got something that my black sneakers look better. I wear my black sneakers. If I've got something that looks good with white sneakers, I wear my white sneakers. I don't know. It might be OCD. <laughs> I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, the, the powerlifting shoes are great. Um, but you know, they're, they're not as cool. But yeah, a Converse or anything with a nice hard flat sole um, would definitely be good. The only downside is when you are doing, you know, a split squat or something like that, where you've got to have a bit of a bend in your shoe, that can actually be really irritating because you can't get the foot or the ankle flexion um, to perform the exercise correctly. So again, I've certainly been in situations where I'm like, oh, you know what? I wish I had my, my soft fluffy sneakers on today for my lunges because I can't bend my toe or I'm doing a bulk airing and split squat. Um, and the hard flat sole just doesn't work. So, um, I don't know whether I'm answering your question specifically here. I think if you're more advanced, there's no downside to having a soft spongy shoe. Um, uh, you know, it just means that there's probably some more muscles being recruited and you might end up getting to failure faster, but you know, if it's actually off putting and you feel like you're risking an injury because you're so unstable, then I would move back to the hard, you know, the converse or something like that. Okay, next question. I would love it if you could talk about what it takes from a nutrition and exercise point of view to maintain muscle, not build. Thanks in advance from Stacey. Okay, so not the question that I get every day. Most people are like, how do I get as much muscle as my body as humanly possible? <laughs> so uh, in previous videos, I've talked a little bit about, um, I guess, the weekly set number that I believe um, is appropriate for like gain versus maintenance versus atrophy. And I think there's also context needing to be given in terms of are you new or are you an experienced lifter? Because the rep, sorry, the set number per week 
probably differs um, between those two groups uh, because the different training stimulus will result in a different outcome. In fact, somebody that's brand new to lifting uh, will be able to see um, significant hypertrophy outcomes with significantly fewer weekly sets um, than somebody that is, you know, a resistance trained uh, individual. So they are going to need a lot more stimulus to acquire more results. Obviously there's like diminishing returns, um, you know, the more experienced we become. So I have talked about, uh, I guess, the number of 10 weekly sets. I think that for somebody that is brand new to resistance training, I think that 10 hard sets to failure on any muscle group um, is probably going to result in, you know, some good hypertrophy. Um, but again, the more muscle you accrue uh, and the closer you get to your genetic ceiling, that 10 sets is no longer going to be enough stimulus. You're going to need more stimulus to get your muscle uh, to grow more. So for somebody that is um, more advanced, you hear me talk about maybe 20 to 30 hard working sets on a single muscle group per week to achieve the same kind of outcomes. And again, it might not even be the same. I think that, you know, we probably have a lifetime growth capacity of like one and a half centimeters maximum if you're a natural person, natural athlete. Um, I'm sure there are unicorns out there that exist that have achieved maybe two centimeters of growth uh, across all of their muscles um, that are still natural, but I haven't seen any of those in a lab yet, or at least not in most studies. Um, so I think somewhere between 20 and 30 working sets on that muscle group will probably see growth for an advanced lifter somewhere in between 10 to 20, you're probably getting some, but maybe not optimal. Um, whereas for a beginner, I think, um, you know, 10 working sets is probably uh, appropriate. Now, your question is a little unique because you're not wanting to grow. You're just wanting to maintain. So again, I don't know whether you're a beginner or whether you're an advanced um, lifter. So I'll give you the number for both. I think if you're a beginner, if you just wanted to maintain your uh, muscle and not really grow, um, which would be an interesting phenomenon, but I'm sure those people exist, um, probably like three to six working sets a week would be sufficient for some growth initially and then it would cause you know to be uh you'd be maintaining your your muscle mass i think for somebody that is advanced for muscle maintenance probably somewhere between 10 and 15 hard sets a week might be adequate for maintenance but if you're wanting to lose i'd probably go sub 10. Um, i think if you were doing less than 10 sets as an advanced lifter on any muscle group you're probably not going to be uh, gaining anything and maybe starting to trickle off in terms of atrophy, but you know, there's so much context to that conversation because, you know, you could be doing like, I wanted to stop training my, my biceps, for instance, I had no interest in growing them anymore. So I haven't trained a bicep intentionally or put it in a workout of mine in years, but I also haven't lost that much size across my muscle. Um, and it's interesting to me. The reason I think that is because when I do back exercise, so any like pulling movements, whether it's a vertical row or a horizontal pull down, I'm still using my biceps. So like I, if I do a, a wide, a close grip pull down or a wide grip pull down, um, I am still using this muscle. Now it might not get to failure. It might be the secondary muscle group that's working. It might get to an RPE of six, whereas my back is completely fried. Um, so even I think just being a secondary muscle group um, has allowed me, unfortunately, to maintain size that I don't want. Um, so I would, I'd give that some consideration too. Like how much exercise are you doing, um, on other muscle groups that might also, you know, whatever the intended muscle group is that you want to shrink, where else is that getting hit as a secondary muscle group? Because that too might be uh, implicating your capacity to either maintain, shrink or grow. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I know that's not really a direct answer because I wasn't sure of your experience levels, but I, I hope that that gives some context. Um, by chance, do you have any plans to mentor other female coaches in the future? I feel like having a role model is important in this space. Thank you for everything. Yeah, absolutely. So I obviously work primarily with people that, that are wanting to make you know, changes to their, their body comp or at least our team do. Um, but I, I think, you know, if you're wanting to, uh, improve your, um, your skill set and, you know, learn about business, I mean, I, I think I've done okay. I'm definitely not like, I don't know, a multi, multi billionaire. That is for sure. But, um, I think I have done all right. And, uh, I hope that I would be able to help people. I mean, at least just in like getting businesses set up and uh, having an efficient system. Um, yeah, I think that the way that we do things is, it's pretty cool um, and has allowed me to have a lot of uh, success 
um, and help a lot of people. So yeah, I'd love to help. Um, I would probably just recommend reaching out to our team um, and letting them know that um, you're interested in getting some mentoring. I would love to do that. I think it would be really fun. Um, okay, next question. Um, thanks for bringing us along on your journey. Um, love the shout out to Angel Bikinis. Wow, they did a wonderful job with your kit. Yeah, oh my God, amazing. Um, I appreciate hearing about that. The beer body branding is so awesome, so fun, and good luck with this prep. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate the comment. Um, Danny Moore, gotta love Danny every week. Get a comment like this. I love you so much. <laughs> this is so funny. Hello from South Carolina. Um, sorry, California rather. Gosh, I should wear my glasses. Um, thanks so much for filming and sharing these uh, epic lifestyle and fitness vlogs. Um, uh, your blonde hair looked fantastic, looking very lean. You're an excellent coach. Uh, happy Easter from our channel. Okay, this is just a marketing one. I'm sorry. Should have read ahead. Uh, arms are looking fire. <laughs> thanks. Uh, I guess they look good, but I feel like crap. So for anybody that is thinking about trying to get this lean, wouldn't recommend it unless you're a competitor. Um Da, 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 da. I love how that you find balance between working hard and playing hard. Yes, absolutely. And the festival was obviously very fun. Um, no hangover either, surprisingly. Um, it's amazing when you spread your drinks out and have a bit of water or some diet soda in between. Voila, feeling just as good. Um, uh, you've probably addressed this, but why don't you use your standing or walking desk? I think I've already addressed this one. Um, I just can't focus when I'm walking. Uh, I know it's a slow speed, but it is just not... Um, not something that I can do. I think there are a very limited number of tasks right now for me that I could do where I could focus and be walking. Um, I just feel like when I can get down and type, I need to be seated. So I don't know, maybe it's got something to do with having ADD. I'm not sure. It's like trying to do two things at once. My brain is not as fast as the average person. I don't know, um, but I, I just can't. So I used to have one. Um, I did my coaching check-ins. Um, but I was so out of breath. I just felt it was unprofessional. Um, and I couldn't talk to my clients. So I'd be like level one walking and I would be like <gasps> breathing into my, uh, to my microphone, talking to my clients. So, um, yeah, I just decided that that wasn't the look that I wanted to go for. Uh, and then I wanted to be able to kind of give undivided attention and not, um, give them, uh, maybe a, a deaf experience from having to lift, listen to, to heavy breathing while I do coaching check-ins. So, that is finally it, everybody. Um, again, if you have specific questions that you would like to ask about your own journey, uh, about your own training, about your own health, um, please, by all means, leave me a comment. I will definitely do a video on, I guess, the process to eating disorder recovery. It has been an absolute nightmare roller coaster. I had to hit rock bottom before I even could think about kind of getting out of it, wanting to change. I had to be motivated to change. Um, and, uh, that meant giving up, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of, um, social norms and changing my, my values, everything. Like I, I literally don't even feel like the same person anymore. <laughs> so I'm really excited to do that video. Uh, it probably won't be next week. That's for sure. I have to organize another filming day, but, um, I would love to share a little bit more about that because, you know, it really, it has changed, uh, it's, it's changed my life, um, for the better. I, I just so much happier, um, also I think circumstances were very, uh, unfortunate too. I think there's a lot of things personally that were kind of going on relationships that were just not conducive to, to me being a happy person. And now I feel like, um, you know, in the right environment with the right people, um, you know, that too has played a huge role, I think in, in kind of getting to where I am now and allowing me the mental fortitude to work through and tackle an eating disorder. Cause it does take a lot of mental energy. So that's all from me guys. I appreciate you. Um, thank you so much for supporting me along this journey. 18 days. Holy moly. <laughs> God, I hope I can do this. I'm going to put up some posing videos um, uh, sometime this week on Instagram too. So uh, keep a lookout for that. Uh, you can let me know whether you think I'm ready. I put up some comparisons uh, just yesterday evening um, to the girl, uh, Miss Laura Lee, I should say the girl, this beautiful specimen, um, Miss Laura Lee chap. Um, she just won the Arnold here in the US um, in the bikini category. So um, I, I still have to get a little bit leaner, obviously, but I'm curious to see what you guys think. Um, you know, the average person just looking at these pictures, um, do you think that I can do it? Maybe I'm delusional. Um, <laughs> I'm also open to the possibility that I have a really uh, unrealistic goal, but Hey, why shoot for anything less? Like if you're going to go in and do something in life, like why settle for a second? Why settle for 
for less than, you know, the best. Um, I've always had that mindset. And, you know, I, I think um, when you think like that, oh my God, like the, the reward at the end and just the, 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 the sense of purpose and the, the, the feeling of overwhelm is just amazing. So I'm, I think I'll keep shooting for, for the top in anything that I do. <laughs> um, it's not, not an easy life to, to, uh, to be part of, I guess, or to be in, but it's a very fulfilling one. So anyhow, I'm going to stop talking. Have a great week guys. And I'll see you at my next check-in.